The next bill on the calendar for the day is House File 35. The clerk will report the bill. <clears throat> House File number 35, number two on the calendar for the day, an act relating to state government requiring the state forecast to include the rate of inflation. I recognize the member from Anoka, the author of the bill, Representative Stevenson, to explain the bill. Madam Speaker and members, uh, this bill would restore inflation to our budget forecasting, making our budget forecast honest. In the next few weeks, we're going to kick off our, our 2023 budgeting process when we get the state's budget forecast. But unfortunately, over the last 20 years, our budget forecasting in Minnesota has been dishonest because we have included inflation on one side of the equation, but not on the other side. We account for inflation on the revenue side, but not on the spending side. We are the only state, the only state in the country uh, that does this. The federal government does not do this. No business in their right mind would do this. It's insane. I believe, as you heard in the last uh, bill, that Minnesota is an exceptional state. This is not something we want to be exceptional for. Uh, we are, you're getting handed out right now a commentary uh, from uh, five former finance commissioners for Minnesota, uh, two that served in Republican administrations, two that served in DFL administrations, and one that served under Governor Ventura. They all think that we need to make this change. I hope you'll join me in supporting it tonight. There's an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Stevenson moves to amend House Law number 35. The amendment is coded A3. Representative Stevenson, to your amendment. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. This amendment adds an effective date to make sure that the uh, February forecast will include this change. Any discussion on the Stevenson amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, please say no. The motion prevails. The amendment is adopted. There's an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Nash moves to amend House Bill number 35 as amended, and the amendment is coded DE3. The member from Carver, Representative Nash, to your amendment. Thanks, Madam Speaker. This uh, would take the exact same amount of money that's going to be peeled off the surplus and uh, spent uh, on autopilot for this bill, and it would uh, put it towards something I think that's really, really good. Uh, members, you've heard me talk about in the past that we need to educate our students long term to become cyber literate. I actually was talking with some of your members in the, uh, the alcove earlier. Uh, I think I freaked them out a little bit about some of the things that are going on in the world of cybersecurity, but a great goal and a great effort to spend this same amount of money on that it's going to peel off uh, would be to educate our students to become literate by the time they graduate high school so that they can be sound cyber students moving out in the world. Uh, and because I feel so passionately about the DE3, Madam Speaker, I would ask for a roll call. Representative Nash requests a roll call. Seeing 15 hands, there will be a roll call. Representative Nash. Thank you, Madam Speaker. In uh, the wise words of Representative Davids, this is a fine piece of legislation. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I encourage a green vote. The member from St. Louis, Representative Olson. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise to a point of order under House Rule 4.05, and I will proceed to state my point of order that an amendment to a bill that has received its second reading and is being considered by the House is out of order if that amendment would increase the spending. And there is no appropriation in the bill, as noted on the fiscal note, because the bill doesn't actually appropriate any money. And according to Representative Garofalo in committee, when we heard the bill, this does not spend any money. This amendment is out of order. I've reviewed the bill. I've reviewed the amendment. I've reviewed the rule. I find the point of order well taken. Madam There's Speaker, another... I, would I would appeal the ruling of the Speaker and request a roll call. Representative Nash appeals the ruling of the Speaker and requests a roll call. Discussion on the appeal. Seeing none, the clerk will take the roll on the appeal. Yes, vote green. Members, please vote. The clerk will close the roll. There being 70 ayes and 59 nays, it is it judgment of the body that the decision of the speaker shall stand? There is an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. 
Robbins moves to amend House Bill number 35 as amended. The amendment is coded DE1. The member from Hennepin, Representative Robbins, to your amendment. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, members. Um, following up on Representative Nash, I also think it's very important that we not just um, put inflationary increases into the budget projections across the board. Our job is to provide oversight and to set priorities. All Minnesota families have limited budgets. They don't get inflationary increases, and the state government shouldn't either. It is our job to provide oversight and set priorities, and one of the priorities all of us talked about on the campaign trail was to eliminate the tax on Social Security for all Minnesotans. I know DFL members who supported that complete elimination. I know everyone on our side did. And that's been a top priority for Minnesotans for years. We are only one of 11 states that still taxes Social Security income. So this amendment would simply take that money and use it to um, fully repeal the Social Security tax. As you know, um, Governor Walls um, did some adjustments, but he did not uh, fulfill the promise of fully repealing it. And members, it's time we do that in Minnesota. Thank you. Member from Ramsey, Representative Hollins. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise to a point of order under House Rule 3.21. Um, under the House Rule 3.21, motions and propositions must be germane. A motion or proposition on a subject different from that under consideration must not be admitted. Um, House File 35 has nothing to do with taxes. I reviewed the amendment and the rule in the bill, and I find the point of order well taken. Representative Robbins. Madam Speaker, I'd like to move uh, to appeal the ruling of the Speaker. Would you like a roll call, Representative Robbins? And request a roll call. Thank she you, Madam She requests a roll call. Seeing 15 hands, there will be a roll call. Any discussion on the appeal? Green agrees with the Speaker. Red uh, would uh, go against the ruling of the Speaker. The member from Chisago, Representative New Brindley. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, th that was odd. We were just told that the amendment has nothing to do with taxes, but it's literally repealing Social Security taxes. I'm confused. Um, clearly, it's germane. We're talking about taxes, and we're talking about taxes. And, and we're, that was the most bizarre argument I've ever heard. I'm not sure that um, Representative Hollins intended to cite that particular rule on germaneness, um, but according to her own argument, I would say it certainly is germane. Uh, it is absolutely about taxes. Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the appeal. The clerk will close the roll. There being 70 ayes and 59 nays, it is the judgment of the House that the decision of the Speaker shall stand. There are no further amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. <clears throat> third reading, House file number 35 as amended. Third reading as amended. Discussion to the bill. The member from Isanti, Representative Doubt. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Uh, in my time here in the legislature, our state budget and the forecasts uh, have become something of an interest to me. Um, my staff would tell you that I was just obsessed with making sure that I had the, the, the briefing book from our forecasts uh, from MMB every time. Uh, I still have them in my office from, from the entire time, and I look back at them from time to time. Um, in this state, uh, we have two forecasts a year uh, that forecast the revenue that, that we bring into the state. Um, in that report, uh, you know, and, and, and right now in the report that we have uh, the most recent one, we have the largest surplus in state history. So uh, I'll remind folks the way that our budget works, um, and I think you know this, uh, in my freshman term we had a 22-day state government shutdown. Um, since then, uh, uh, well, let me, let me start with during that time, the courts actually ruled uh, that, that we would continue essential operations during that 22-day period. I think at the end of that 22-day period, um, they actually realized that the shutdown was more expensive than keeping state government running. Um, I might be wrong on that, but I think that's my recollection. Um, and and the, the reality is, uh, since then, um, in the little standoff that we had with the governor when he tried to line item veto the, the House and the Senate's funding, 
Um, uh, and then we went to the Supreme Court. Um, the Supreme Court actually ruled at that time that in the event of a state government shutdown, that the courts cannot uh, appropriate money, that that is a, a job that is solely uh, the job of the legislature. So uh, in the event of a shutdown now, there will be no money appropriated in the state of Minnesota. We haven't actually dealt with what that looks like yet. I keep kind of bugging people and prodding people that we've got this uh, cliff that we will all jump off of if we don't uh, have funding that continues. Um, and, and you will see things completely shut down, which means uh, rolling uh, wheelchairs out of nursing homes and unlocking the doors to the prisons and letting people go uh, because nobody will be showing up to work. Um, our state government will shut down completely. The reason that I'm telling you that is because this really does nothing when it comes to spending money. This legislature has to, every two years, appropriate every dollar that is spent from the general fund in the state of Minnesota. This does nothing. But I will tell you why it's important to Democrats in this chamber, okay? Because Democrats in this chamber find themselves with a rare uh, trifecta in state government. They have complete control of state government at a time when we find ourselves having the largest surplus in state history, okay? And if you were to poll Minnesotans, probably 99% of them would say they want some tax relief. The other 1% are elected to the legislature and are Democrats, okay? And this is the most difficult thing that they have ever and will ever have to, to, to do because they don't want any tax relief ever in the state of Minnesota, okay? But it's very difficult to convince the general public when you have a $17 billion surplus that we aren't collecting too much money from Minnesotans to operate state government. And Minnesotans want their money back, okay? So what this will do, it will actually reduce the surplus when it's reported in the revenue forecast because it will overstate the spending. Not money we've appropriated, but they will add to that appropriation this inflationary rate and assume that that's going to be spent, even though it will require the legislature to appropriate that money. And if we don't appropriate that money, state government will shut down, okay? But what it will do is create a perception that we don't have a surplus which will take away any incentive for Democrats to ever do any tax relief. That's what this is about. But I assure you that right now, Minnesotans know that we have a $17 billion surplus. They're struggling from the record inflation that Democrats have inflicted on them with their terrible economic policies, and they want their money back. And believe me, whether you pass this or not, they're going to remember it come the next election. And I can't wait. The member from Waseca, Representative Petersburg. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And uh, I'm going to share the same word that I think my colleague over on the other side just said. I think it's insane to actually pass this law. And let me tell you why. So I think um, Representative Dow just meant, made, I think, a really good case that this body has to appropriate all funding that's spent. And guess what we appropriate? The dollars that come in. We don't appropriate inflation. Inflation is an arg argumentative uh, issue out there. We know how much money is coming in. We do have some control on, on increasing those taxes that are coming in if we want to or not. But the reality is that we have to appropriate every dollar that gets spent. Whether it's inflationary or not, it doesn't matter. It's, an, it's appropriate that we understand that we are, are spending the dollars that are appropriated. And so when we go through our budgeting process and we look at uh, what was spent last year and was needed for this year, we're looking at all the needs of, of the agencies, and the agencies are going to only spend, again, as I'm going to say this again, they can only spend what we appropriate, regardless of what, what the inflationary dictates say. So, so, and we're talking about this now when we have a surplus. And surplus really sounds good because, well, okay, it just means we have a little less surplus. 
But let's take it to the extreme and all of a sudden there's a deficit. If we do this inflationary one, this bill here with inflation, that has a tendency to actually appear like the deficit is less. But guess what? We still have to appropriate the dollars for that inflationary cost beyond what the revenues are. Now, I could tell you those, those extra dollars that could be raised to this inflationary, this arbitrary inflationary factor. I, I know Chair Hornstein over there and I on transportation would love those dollars to come into transportation. But they're fiction. They're arbitrary. We have to understand that our responsibility is for funding the organizations based upon what they spent last year and what the increases are this year, and we need to know that in relationship to the revenue that comes in. To put in an arbitrary factor uh, of inflation just gives the perception of more than what uh, more spending, and it has nothing to do with reality. And I know that we deal a lot with perception here, but I think this is very dangerous. I think it's ill-advised. And I think what's even worse is it has a tendency to erode the responsibility of this body to actually delve into the costs that are going to be there and whether or not expenses ought to be reduced, not just because they're an automatic pilot in regards to inflation. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. The member from Carver, Representative Nash. Thanks, Madam Speaker. I've talked about this in state government finance and in ways and means. Um, this basically puts government spending on autopilot. And as many of you know, and for our, our new members, this body is the origination point for every nickel spent here at the legislature. And then we ship it over to that other mysterious body that we don't often talk about, and they slow things down. But it has to be appropriated by the legislature. Putting inflation in like this simply puts government spending on autopilot. And, and for those of you that have had either the pleasure or displeasure of serving with me in committee, you know that I scrutinize pretty much everything that we get that comes into committee. I ask a lot of questions. That's what we should be doing. We should be encouraging scrutiny of our budgets. We just shouldn't say, eh, we're going to put this on autopilot. That's what this bill will do. What this bill also doesn't do doesn't factor in deflation doesn't mention that at all, doesn't handle that at all. But So if you want to push a green button tonight, you are putting uh, Minnesota government on autopilot spending. It will get larger. My colleagues have already said that. Um, Minnesotans will be watching you. They're going to wonder why you have abdicated your responsibility as the appropriations body to a simple fact or a, a simple act of inflation. Representative Stevenson will tell you this is a great bill. Um, I would rather rely on all of us to beat up on a budget and then ship it out as opposed to just sit back and let autopilot take you uh, probably on a ride that you don't want to take. Vote red. The member from Stearns, Representative O'Driscoll. Would the uh, bill author yield to a question, please? He will yield. Representative O'Driscoll. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, Representative Stevenson, could you just, for the body, it's kind of late and it's maybe been a while since folks have had a chance to look at the bill, but could you review the, the methodology that will be used to determine what inflation would be and how these different budget areas would be affected? Representative Stevenson. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Representative Driscoll, the bill gives uh, MMB discretion in determining that they have to consult with the appropriate chairs. I am aware that MMB uses the Consumer Price Index. Representative O'Driscoll. Oh, thank you, Madam Speaker. And would the bill author yield to an additional question? He will. Representative O'Driscoll. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And Representative Stevenson, so this, if I'm not mistaken, is also going to be centered in uh, MMB, the acronym standing for Management and Budget. They are going to be the ones who are going to be helping to evaluate and meet with the various chairs in the House and the Senate to determine what these inflationary numbers might be. Am I correct in that? Representative Stevenson. Uh, Madam Speaker, Representative O'Driscoll, MMB is required to consult with those chairs, yes. Representative O'Driscoll. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, what you just heard tonight is a lot of folks have we've debated over the years in this chamber which Minnesota agency has the most power and control over people. And for years and years and years that's been debated in here. And if this was Canterbury Downs, we've got a new leader in the race. Management and budget has just become, if this bill passes, the most powerful agency in the state of Minnesota. Head of the PCA, 
goes ahead of the Department of Natural Resources and a bunch of other areas that people continually on both sides of the aisle have angst over year after year after year. MMB consults with the chairs and then MMB comes back and says, behind curtain number one, this is inflation for this area. Behind curtain number two, this is inflation for this area. And curtain number three, this is inflation for yet a third budget area. And then what happens is that gets out in the news and people start seeing these. And then when the legislature, this body, begins to go ahead and start doing an appropriation, these are budget cuts. The legislature is cutting education. The legislature is cutting transportation. Right on down the list. Mark these words. Take a look at the clock. That says 1130 on January 26, 2013, or 2023, Representative Tim O'Driscoll told you it was going to happen. And he's not going to be wrong on this. And everybody in this chamber in their heart of heart knows that that's exactly what's going to happen. And if you don't think politics can be played with this one, ho, 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 ho. Have I got an energy bill for you? <laughs> this legislature, year after year after year, has been abdicating its authority and handing it over to the administration on a silver platter. And then when the administration doesn't do what the legislature does, the governor goes, shouldn't have given me that power. Power changes in Minnesota. Sometimes the House is in the hands of Republicans. Sometimes it's in the House of de hands of Democrats. Same thing with the Senate. Same thing with the governor's office. And I don't want to hear anybody, when the, when the political landscape changes, saying, you're playing games with this. Because I'm almost positive that everybody on this side of the aisle is going to be a no. And everybody on this side of the aisle is going to be a yes on this topic. I rarely stand up on this floor and talk about things, but this has really got my dander up. And it should each and every one of you in this chamber who holds an election certificate and told the people in the state of Minnesota you are going to look out for their best interests and constitutionally you set the budgets. Madam Speaker, no vote tonight for everyone. Thank you. The point member from Isanti, Representative Dowden. Point of parliamentary inquiry. State your point of parliamentary inquiry. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I'm only asking this uh, because, and I, you were moving a little fast at the beginning, uh, and, and you adopted the First Amendment before I got the copies of the amendment, so I just want to question, was the A3 amendment added to this bill? Yes, it was, Representative Dowden. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And members, pay attention to that. Uh, what I was telling you earlier about the perception of reducing revenues, the A3 amendment makes the enactment language on this bill the day after enactment. Okay? So what that means is our February forecast is the actual forecast that we will use uh, as we set the next biennial budget and the, and the forecast that Democrats will use when they determine the spending and any potential tax cuts. So if you're wondering why, I don't know how many bills we've passed off the House floor, and I won't ask, but I don't think it's very many. So this is the first 1% of the bills we're gonna pass off the House floor. Why is this bill so important? Because they need to make sure that that February forecast that comes out at the end of this month has a drastic reduction in the perception of the surplus that exists or would be available to Minnesotans for tax relief. So when you wanna know why we're not giving taxes back to Minnesotans, this is the sort of thing that we're doing at almost midnight, in the dark of night, trying to pull the wool over Minnesotans' eyes so they think there's no revenue left to give back in tax relief, okay? It literally was the first amendment adopted tonight to make this enacted the day after this bill gets signed. That's why we're rushing it through here at the beginning of session, because we have to, Democrats have to make sure that they reduce that, that, that surplus as much as possible, because I guarantee you, I haven't had a single person tell me that they don't want tax relief, and I'll guarantee you, even as liberal as their constituents are, they haven't either, because when you've got $17 billion or about 
what is that, 25% of our general fund budget? Minnesotans know that we're collecting more than we need to operate state government. So that's why it's such a, you know, today, the two things, we had a climate crisis and we have a budget surplus crisis. We have to get rid of that as immediately, as, as quickly Point as we can. Parliamentary so, inquiry. so tonight is about crises. Representative Freiburg, for what purpose do you rise? A point of parliamentary inquiry. Are we currently on a point of parliamentary inquiry? No, I believe Representative Doubt moved on to a speech related to my answer to the parliamentary inquiry. Representative Doubt. Appreciate the latitude, Madam Speaker, and you weren't wrong. Uh, but I, I, no one else had requested the floor, so I just uh, assumed since the Speaker had recognized me, I would uh, expound on the point. Um, and I think I've made my point. Um, the, the reality of this bill is it has no real impactful meaning. I explained that earlier. This body has to appropriate every dollar um, from the general fund that gets spent in the state of Minnesota. And I actually believe now that's every dollar from the general fund based on the Supreme Court uh, ruling that happened a few years ago. Um, but this is a real thing and it will create a perception amongst the public um, and amongst our voters that the surplus is drastically less. Okay, I, I tried to quickly look back through. Um, on the 10th of every month, you will get an email from our fiscal staff and from MMB uh, telling you what the previous month's um, actual revenue was. Hopefully somebody right now is looking it up. I don't think we've yet had a, 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 a month where our revenues were less than projected in the previous forecast. Um, I don't believe we have. I think every month they have been higher than the previous forecast. So that means this forecast is very likely to be, if this isn't enacted, 17 billion or greater. You watch, you wanna see three card Monty, this is it. Because Democrats are rushing to the finish line to get this bill passed so that they can reduce the surplus, that's what's happening here. It will, it will artificially reduce the surplus. We still will have the same amount of money coming in in revenue but it will look to the public like the surplus is a lot less. And believe me, the pressure on Democrats will be a lot less to give the tax cuts that they don't want to give to Minnesotans. But I guarantee you that you've got people in this chamber that are going to fight to make sure Minnesotans get their money back. That's what Minnesotans want. They're hurting right now from the inflation that's hitting their family budgets. And by the way, Democrats in this chamber don't seem to care about the inflation that they've inflicted on Minnesotans, 8% or more year over year, consistently now, during the Biden administration. So while you don't care about the inflation you're inflicting on Minnesotans, it's a, it's a revenue emergency that we get this bill across the finish line as quickly as possible so that Minnesotans don't think we have too much money and they don't think they're gonna get any back. It's, it's wrong, members, it's wrong. And, and whoever made the point over here earlier about this will make the legislature lazy is right. There's a point at which government gets big enough and our budgets get big enough that a part-time legislature here who's struggling to dig through every one of these budget bills and figure out, hey, where are the efficiencies? I remember when we adopted uh, um, Minute, M-N-I-T, the, 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 the statewide IT department. And that was supposed to be an efficiency. It was supposed to save money. But when we did it, we never reduced the IT people in each one of the departments. So it was this great redundancy. And all it did was add, I don't know how many more jobs to state government. And that's the problem. You can't tell me in the 12 years that I've been here that we can't find any efficiencies in state government. Minnesota families have to, Minnesota businesses have to, and they do. They provide better service to Minnesotans and they do it cheaper. That's what technology does, but technology has not had that impact in state government, or has it, and we haven't held state government accountable. That might be the real problem, but make no mistake, this is only pulling the wool over the public's eyes to make the, the, the surplus looks smaller so that Democrats can get away with zero tax cuts. In fact, I can't believe that every time they speak to the cameras now, they will say, yeah, we're going to cut some taxes and we're going to raise some taxes. 
Watch what the net is, because I guarantee you they're going to raise more than they're cutting. Um, and, and this is going to help them do it. So this is nothing more than pulling the world over the public's eyes, and we're doing it here just before midnight. has no real impact, but it's going to make legislators lazy, and we're going to just, well, it was $50 billion last year. It's going to be $55 billion this year, right? Instead of actually going back and holding each one of the departments accountable and saying, how are you providing better service to Minnesotans? How are you doing it more efficiently and more effectively? And how are you using technology to accomplish that? Those things, those things never happen in our committees here. We ask those questions, but they never happen. We just rubber stamp, big increases, and this will be the, ex I lost it. This isn't it, but let's pretend like it is. This will be the excuse that Democrats will use to do it. So members, vote no. This is nothing more than trying to play three card Monty with the public, and it really is that. That's all this is. Um, because at the end of the day, every legislator in here is going to have to decide how much more money state government needs to operate, and we're going to get to vote on that, regardless of what this thing says. All this is going to do is give the press an excuse to make it look like Minnesotans don't need any tax relief. And I think we all know the answer to that. So thank you, Madam Speaker. The member from Stearns, Representative Damoth. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, members, with a $17.6 billion surplus, and we know that is what it is, if not more, and we couldn't even pass ending or eliminating the tax on Social Security tonight, we are not doing what is right for Minnesotans. We need to return the money to Minnesota. We can't increase and autopilot our government. Please vote no. The member from Anoka, Representative Stevenson. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, members, for the debate uh, tonight. I think it's just important to recall that the reason why we have this uh, particular oddity in Minnesota government, the reason why we are the only state, the only one that does this, is because of political gimmetry of the kind that, the, that uh, Representative Doubt was just accusing us uh, moments ago. Uh, there was, 20 years ago, a situation where we had, you know, maybe a little deficit, and we didn't really want to raise taxes, and we didn't really want to cut the budget, so hey, I know, let's cook the books and take inflation out of the forecast. And 20 years later, here's where we sit. This should not be partisan. Every other state in the country, from the most ruby red to the most blue, does not do this. I sent you around a letter from five former finance commissioners from Democratic, Republican, and independent uh, administrations saying that this is madness. Please vote green. The clerk will take the roll on the bill. The clerk will close the roll. There being 70 ayes and 60 nays, the bill passed as amended and its title agreed to.